Okay, so in the previous video, what we did was set up our Elasticsearch document store to contain all of our paragraphs from meditations. So we did that in this script here. And altogether, we only have, it's not that much data, 508 paragraphs or documents within our document store. So what we now want to do is set up the next part of our retriever reader sack, which is the retriever. And what the retriever will do is given a query, it will communicate with our Elasticsearch document store and return a certain number of contexts, which are the paragraphs in our case, that it thinks are most relevant to our query. So, that's what we are going to be doing here. And the first thing that we need to do is initialize our document store again. So I'm just going to copy these and paste them here. And this would just initialize it from what we've already built. So it's using the same index that already exists. So just initialize that. And once we have our document store, okay, cool, we have that now. Now what we want to do is set up our DPR, which is a dense passage retriever, which essentially uses dense vectors and a type of efficient similarity search to embed these indexes as dense vectors. And then once it comes to actually searching, uh, and finding the most similar or the most relevant documents later on, it will use those dense vectors and find the most similar ones. So I'll explain that a little bit better in a moment. So first, what we want to do is actually initialize that. So we do from haystack dense retriever import dense passage retriever sorry it's the other way around here so retriever dense and then we'll put it into a variable called retriever which uses the dense passage retriever from up here and in here we need to pass a few parameters so the first thing is the document store so the document store is just what we've already initialized doc store and then we need to initialize two different models so it's the query embedding model and the passage embedding model. Now, behind the scenes, Haystack is using the Hugging Face Transformers library. So what we'll do is we'll head over to the models over there and see which embedding models we can use for DPR. Okay, so here, let's just search for DPR and you'll find we have all of these models from Facebook AI. Now, with DPR, the reason that it's so useful for question answering is that we have what are two different models that encode the text that we pass into it. So we have this sort of setup during training and what we see down here are these two models. We have this EP Bert encoder, and we also have this EQ Bert encoder. Now the EP Bert encoder encodes the passages or the context. So essentially the paragraphs that we have fed into our Elasticsearch model. This is what will be encoding them into these vectors here. Now, this is during training, this whole graph. So all we will actually see 
when we're encoding these vectors is we will see the EP encoder and this will create the EP vectors. And all we're going to do is feed in all of the documents from Elasticsearch into this. Now, once all of these have been encoded, we then have a new set of dense vectors. And all of those will be fed back into our document store. So back into Elastic. Now, when it comes to performing similarity search later on, we're going to ask a question and that question will be processed by the EQ encoder. So here we have our EQ encoder and we have our question. So that will go into here. And that will encode our question and then send it over to Elastic and say, okay, what are the most similar vectors to this vector that we created from a question? And the reason that DPR is so good is that if you look at the training down here, we are creating these EP vectors and these EQ vectors that are matching. So where we have a matching question to a matching context, we are training them to maximize the dot product because the dot product measures the alignment between those two vectors. So what happens is that a relevant pass passage and a relevant question will come out to have a very similar vector. So one example that I like to use is if our question was what is the capital of France, the embedding that it will create from that will create a context that looks something like the capital of France is and you know something here we don't know what it will put because it doesn't actually know what the capital of France is it's just doing linguistic transformations to try and figure out what sort of context the answer would come from and then of course when you feed this context into elastic the most similar vector will be the one which contains the answer to our question okay because the answer to our question which is something like the capital of france is paris now we don't have paris here but it will be able to figure that out because it will be the most similar sequence to the context that dpr has produced now back to hugging face here you can see we have these multiple dpr models and what we want is a pair we want a question encoder and a ctx which is context encoder now we'll be using this single nq base so what i'll do is just copy this and in here we just add in our model Okay, so that's a question encoder. Now what we also need is the context encoder, which is instead of question here, we just add CTX. Now we have two other parameters that we need to add in here, which is use GPU, which is if you're using a GPU, obviously you set this to true. If not, you go with faults. It will take a little bit of time to process this if you're not using a GPU though. Then we also add embed 
title equals true as well. Now, what we should see is this will execute without error, hopefully. Okay, great. And then what we need to do is update the embeddings within Elasticsearch. So what we've done here is kind of set up the process. And now what we need to do is update the documents that we have in Elasticsearch to have DPR embeddings. So to do that, we go doc store, update embeddings. And then in here, we pass our retriever. Okay, now this may take, well, this would be really quick for me. We don't have that many documents. And even on CPU, actually, with the lack of documents we have, it should be pretty quick. So what we see here, we created these embeddings and then we posted them again to our index. So that is pretty cool. And now what we need to do is just test that it actually works. Now let's go with retriever. And this is how we get context from our Elasticsearch document store. So right, retrieve. And then we pass in a query here. So let me just find something here. Like, what did you learn from your great grandfather, maybe? Or from Verus? Uh, yeah, let's go from grandfather. Let's go grandfather. So, what did you, what did your grandfather teach you? Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but let's see. Okay, so you see that we return quite a few contexts here. Now we haven't set up the full thing, so we're just returning what it sees as being relevant context. We are not actually extracting an answer out yet because that will be the job of our reader model. So what we have is from my great grandfather, we have that one. So it's okay. Some other ones here. Let's type in grandfather. Okay, so it's just returning that one, which is fine, it's not perfect, but what we would expect to do in reality is return more. So let's try another one as well. And let's say, who taught you about freedom of will? Who taught the freedom of will? And we see here, okay, in the first one, we don't get the correct answer that we want or the correct context. And we go down and um, I saw, uh, there he is. So here is the context that we wanted to return. So it returns that as the fourth best context, which is fine because when we build our reader model later on, we kind of expect that to sort those a little bit better than our retriever model. This is pretty cool and I think definitely a good start. So now what we have, retrieved meditations, set up our document store, and now we have also set up our retriever. So we can also cross that off. And next thing is our reader model. So I think that's it for this video. In the next one, of course, we'll, we'll move on to that reader model and let's just see how that goes. But so far, I'm pretty happy with that. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.